Now we'll read today's passage. Today's passage is Luke, chapter thirteen, verses eighteen through twenty-one. Once again, Luke, chapter thirteen, verses eighteen through twenty-one. Then Jesus asked, "What is the kingdom of God like? What shall I compare it to?" It is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his garden. It grew and became a tree, and the birds perched in its branches. Again, he asked, "What shall I compare the kingdom of God to?" It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about sixty pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough. Please allow me to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to be able to gather together to worship you and to sing songs of praise. You tell us, Lord, that if we ask, you will、uh, you will give to us and provide. And so, Lord, we ask, Lord, that your kingdom will come. We will、uh, do this by、uh, putting your kingdom first and your、uh, priorities first in our lives. Lord, allow us to. Be able to know exactly what your will is, and to know about your kingdom, so we can put that first in our lives. Please watch over Pastor Anjiki as he gives his message this morning, and allow the ears of our hearts to be open to hear from you. We have great expectations. Pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. Today there are various people visiting for the first time, and we'll introduce you later on. But thank you so much for coming to be able to worship、uh, with us this morning. In this service, we have English and Chinese a simultaneous translation. So you're welcome to be able to listen in either English or Chinese by picking up、uh, earphones out at the lobby. Sometimes the translation is better than my what I'm actually saying. <laughs> We're going through the book of Luke, and today we are up to、uh, chapter thirteen, verses eighteen through twenty-one, and it's、uh, talking about what the kingdom of God is like. So that's what I'd like to talk about with you today. There was once an、uh, elementary school, and a teacher there was asking the children a question. They were asking them, "What is the fastest growing fish?" And what is the slowest growing fish? So that's what the teacher was talking about. And one boy raised his hand and said, "Teacher, I know which、uh, fast grows fi- which fish grows the fastest. It's the fish my father caught." And so the teacher said, "Oh, well, what kind of、uh, fish did your father catch?" And the boy said, "Well, I don't know exactly what kind it was, but..." When my father caught it, he brought it back and said it was about twenty centimeters. And the next day, when he was talking to some other guy, he said yesterday he caught a thirty centimeter f-、uh, fish. And then the day after that, he was talking to another guy, and he said that he caught a forty centimeter fish the other day. So every day, the fish my father catches seems to grow ten centimeters. So you can see that it it wasn't really growing that much. In today's passage as well, it's talking about how uh, some uh, odd item actually does grow, and this is what Jesus is talking about. Today's theme is talking about the kingdom of God and how it expands. What is the kingdom of God? Well, it's the a sphere of a, that God is、uh, ruling and reigning over, and that's what's referred to as God's kingdom. So let's look at the Bible, and we'll look at verse eighteen to start with. Here it says,、uh, Jesus is saying, "What is the kingdom of God life? What shall I compare it to?" So this phrase here that Jesus is saying, "What shall I compare it to?" or "What is it like?" is something that the Jewish rabbis would often use. It's the same type of phrase they would use when they were trying to explain something. So they would say, "What is this like?" or "What is what could this be compared to?" This was、uh, something a phrase they commonly used. So Jesus、uh, was imitating their same type of phrasing. 
And today's topic, of course, is the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ was talking about the kingdom of God, and he compared it to two、uh, different things here. The first thing he compared it to is mentioned in verse 19. It says, It is like a mustard seed. Which a man took and planted in his garden. It grew and became a tree, and the birds perched in its branches. So it's saying here that the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. Have you ever seen a mustard seed? In Israel, you can see mustard seeds and You can see、um, them actually、um, being sold and、uh, pressed in order to be able to、uh, sell. There's people here who may have even bought them. Have you bought them? Okay, one person has. <laughs> so then you can ask them to show you sometime. And they're very, very small. They're kind of like a sesame seeds, but actually smaller than that. So when you plant it, it becomes a huge tree. In the book of Mark and in Matthew as well, it speaks of、um, mustard seeds and saying how they are smaller than any other seeds. In Israel, when they're talking about something small, they would often refer to、uh, as an example of a mustard seed. So if they would say, like, if you're a weak person, then your、like, heart is like a mustard seed. And they would just compare anything to a mustard seed if they want to emphasize it being small. So they were saying here, it's being said here that the kingdom of God starts out small, but it goes to be, expands to be just enormous. And in the end, for example, with this、uh, tree, it, it's the size that birds can come and perch in its branches. You can see this in the Old Testament as well. And you can see how God's、uh, kingdom and realm、uh, expands over time. If you're looking in the Old Testament in the book of Daniel, in chapter 4, it says it's talking about Babylon and the king、uh, Nebuchadnezzar at that time.、Uh, he's making a Japanese joke, I can't translate it, sorry. <laughs> and it's talking about、um, King Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar who saw a dream. And in it, it says, These are the visions I saw while I was lying in bed. It looked, and there stood me a tree in the middle of the land. Its height was enormous. The tree grew large and strong, and its top touched the sky. It was visible to the ends of the earth. Its leaves were beautiful, its fruit abundant, and on it was food for all. Under、uh, under it, and the wild animals found shelter, and the birds lived in its branches. From it, every creature was fed. So it's just、uh, talking about this tie, a tall tree that became even taller and re- reached up to heaven. And it could be seen from anywhere all over the world. So it would have been an enormous、uh, tree. Of course, this was in his dream. So he was wondering what this meant. He didn't understand. He had the prophet Daniel、uh, interpret his dream. And、uh, Daniel interpreted it by saying, in、uh, Verse 22 Your Majesty, you are that tree. You have become great and strong. Your greatness has grown until it reaches the sky, and your dominion extends to the distant parts of the earth. Nebuchadnezzar was、um, going to gain even more power and expand, and that's what、uh, God was telling him through this dream. A small start can become something quite enormous in the end. In the Old Testament as well, in the book of Ezekiel, in chapter 17, it speaks through the prophet Ezekiel about a different vision. It says, This is what the sovereign Lord says I myself will take a shoot from the very top of the cedar and plant it. I will break off a tender sprig from its topmost shoots and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel, I will plant it. It will produce branches and bear fruit and become a splendid cedar. Birds of every kind will nest in it, and they will find its shelter in the shade of its branches. So they took a, just a shoot off the tree and then planted it and became an enormous tree. And that's where birds came to live. So this is just in, in the same way, seeing how something that started out small grew to be quite large. This is specifically uh, ex- uh, ex- referring to Jesus Christ and how Jesus Christ's、um, im-、uh, impact was enormous. It has gone around the world. In the book of Luke, 
Luke is uh, talking about the kingdom of God and also explains how this kingdom starts out very small but ends up going around the entire world. In a, just a little further, in verse 29, it says how people will come from the east and the west and the north and the south and will come to take their places at the feast in the kingdom of God. So this is ex expressing how all types of people will come to be gathered in the kingdom of God and they will all be a part of it. And it's another prophecy. Jesus Christ Is, was telling his disciples about this. And this is something that he was explaining about 2,000 years ago. At that time, those people who believed in Jesus, his disciples, were just a few in number. If you compared them to the actual number of people in the world, it was a very, very small, small group. Jesus Christ was on the cross, died on the cross, and was resurrected three days later. And 40 days later, he, uh, 40 days he spent with his uh, disciples. He wanted to um, spend time with them and to prove, them, prove to them various things. And after 40 days, he went back up to heaven. After 10 days from that was the day of uh, Pentecost, and that is the day when the Holy Spirit came. At that time, there were around 120 people uh, who believed. So this was the like starting number for the official church. And they were blessed by the Holy Spirit, and that started the church. So that's when the church officially is uh, uh, said to have started. These The leaders of the disciples, Peter, uh, began to give testimony. And uh, it says that uh, 3,000 people believed in Jesus Christ. So what started with 120 it instantly grew to 3,000. Of course, that's still in comparison to the whole world is very small, but the Bible explains how that every day more and more people were saved and added to this number. So it actually went up to 5,000 at one point. Then Paul became a Christian later on. Through him, he was able to reach out not only to the Jewish people, but also to people who were outside of the Jewish uh, realm. And to Rome, he was able to go to various uh, cities to begin churches as well. The gospel spread. In 70 AD, Rome uh, came to Jerusalem to um, completely destroy it. This was in the uh, year of 70. And in that time, in the New Testament, it was pretty much all in place. The New Testament um, explains how this happened and how information was uh, passed to the churches. The churches uh, grew in this manner. Uh, some unfortunate aspect of this is that for about 240 years, the church went through a severe uh, time of persecution. One um, um, notable time was when uh, Nero um, was in reign, and also Demetrianus as well. Many Christians, unfortunately, were uh, martyred at that time. However, in uh, year 312 AD, Constantine, who was the Roman Emperor, said that he uh, believed in uh, Jesus Christ. He came to faith in Christ, and that stopped uh, the persecution of Christians. And 80 years later, in uh, the year of 392, Theodos, um, Roman uh, king, um, decided to change the religious structure there and all of the Christian persecution completely stopped. However, this meant that the people who didn't believe in Christians were in turn persecuted. So some people who, even though they didn't believe in Christian Christianity in Christ, they would say they did just not to be persecuted. So, uh, of course, they weren't true converts. It was just an outward um, a proclamation of faith. And so they brought all of their idols and all of their customs into the church. The church, unfortunately, um, began to fall apart because it w went away from what the tr Bible was truly teaching. And from the 14th, 15th, and 16th centuries, the religious uh, reformation took place. Martin Luther and John Calvin and other people were uh, important leaders of this. 
they were saying the Bible only and that it's faith only and uh, faith only through Christ and that uh, to be saved is only uh, through grace. And so they were saying, making these uh, strong proclamations, which is exactly what's stated in the Bible. And so the church was able to uh, re uh, revive itself because of this. From 1790 to, uh, for a period of 200 years through 1990, they had the Great Commission era. Many uh, missionaries went all around the world during this time. And through this, uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ was uh, spread uh, quite well around the world. In October 16th through 25th of 2010 in Cape Town, South Africa, uh, a world um, Christian event was held. The people that gathered there were from uh, 198 countries. 198. And in the United Nations, just for reference, uh, there's only 193 countries. So this number of people participating from countries was um, actually uh, more than that of the United Nations. So this is saying that countries that do not have Christians are zero at this point because the um, uh, gospel of Jesus Christ has spread all around the world in a period of uh, 2,000 years. Just as Jesus said 2,000 years ago, the kingdom of God starts out small, and it's even just like a noticeable. It's very, very small, and, but in the end, it will grow to expand completely around the world, and it will be undi undeniable any, uh, anywhere. This is what we can realize has come to pass in the era we're living. In China, uh, the government recently announced that there are 160 um, million Christians. And this is a recording to the government, so it's likely this is actually a small number. In the African continent, uh, about 100 years ago, only 4% were Christians, um, but it's uh, greatly increased. So this is just uh, showing how what Jesus was uh, prophesying years ago it, that has come to pass. Now history is uh, getting to its last phase, and that's when the Israel people of Israel will uh, turn to belief in Christ as well. About 70 years ago, in 1948, uh, Israel came to be recognized as a country, and they're just uh, having a celebratory uh, events of that for celebrating 70 years. And at that time, it said that there were only about 30 Christians in Israel. Now, it's said that there are uh, 30,000 uh, Messi Messianic Jews, which are uh, Jewish Christians. According to the records, this has increased considerably over the past two to three years. It's uh, amazing that um, even though there's uh, persecution and hard uh, difficulties in pro um, proclaiming the gospel in this area, era, uh, sorry, area, it's still greatly increasing. The number of believers is greatly increasing in number. Uh, likely this is due to God's miraculous work. Um, and sometimes these people see visions of Jesus Christ or um, people sense that Jesus is telling them to go to church and so they become uh, Christians. There are many people who are actually uh, proclaiming this. Also, through the Internet, many people are accessing Christian websites from Israel and they come to become to have faith in this way. In Israel, um, there are 122 computers per every 100 people, so it's the highest number of amount of computers per people per in a country anywhere. In this way, um, people are accessing uh, information about Christianity uh, through the internet. This is something that was unheard of just you know years ago, but now due to technology, it's possible for many people to hear the gospel even if it's um, banned in their country. So what the disciples were doing over 2,000 years ago has um, greatly impacted what's happening today. And you can see how what Jesus was prophesying truly came to pass. And you can see that by looking at what is happening in our day today. The kingdom of God started out very, very small, but you can see how it has come to spread around the world. It's just exactly as Jesus said it would be. There's one other example Jesus said. It's in verse 20. 
uh, when he's saying, what shall I compare the kingdom of God to? And he says, it's like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour, worked until it worked through all through the dough. Now Jesus is talking about yeast. Do you know what yeast is? You can buy it and put it into... Oh, he's making another joke. Sorry. <laughs> Japanese joke. Um, it's, so he's talking about yeast. And when you put it into the dough of bread, it really makes it expand. And he's saying that uh, the kingdom of God is just like that. So even a small amount of yeast can make a huge difference. Here it's talking about three measures of meal in the original translation. One measure is about 12.8 uh, liters, and three measures will be 38.4 liters, which is about 60 pounds. So this is about the amount of um, that could feed 150 people, and this amount of bread could feed about 150 people. So, and it says that the um, yeast worked through the um, dough, and this uh, means that it really mixed in and worked through. It's saying that it's making the um, yeast become one with the bread. So here we have a flour, and you put a little bit of yeast in, right? And because of this impact, it affects all of the flour. And so it's a physical uh, change in that. And it uh, physically expands. So this yeast is representative of Jesus' gospel and how when it uh, gets into an area, it can completely change uh, what is there and expand it as, uh, as well. So people who, um, people who hear the gospel are truly changed by it, and not just them, but their family and their friends and others. If one family gains faith, obviously they will impact their, their community. It's inevitable this will happen. So in this way, Jesus' gospel pass, passes on and gets expanded from person to person to person. I heard a recent testimony um, from the country of Azer Azerbaijan, as I, I'm pronoun pronouncing this correctly, probably. <laughs> it's on uh, a country, and <laughs> it's another Japanese joke, sorry. Look at a map. Um, anyway, it's in southern Eurasia. <laughs> and the capital of this country is Baku. It's about 120 uh, kilometers from Shemaha City. There's um, a pastor of a church there, um, Pastor Akif from the Binyard Church. So this, uh, sorry, his church was located about 120 uh, kilometers away from Baku, which is in Shemaha City. And he went to an orphanage to um, give presents to children and speak with them about the gospel. He was passing through an area near the Galaberry village, and he saw two young boys uh, selling nuts on the side of the road. He um, really felt that the Holy Spirit was telling him, telling him to talk to the kids about Jesus Christ. So he went and bought a bag of nuts from them and asked them if they'd heard of Jesus Christ. And they said, no, they'd never heard of Jesus Christ before. So... He told the kids about the um, Jesus Christ and then gave the kids a present that was left over from the orphanage. And there was one of the two boys was named uh, Elson, and he really ex seemed to be interested in Jesus Christ. And he said to um, the pastor, he said, you mean that Jesus came to die for me so I may be saved? And he said, he said yeah. And so he said, oh, I believe. And then the little boy gave the pastor his uh, phone number on a piece of paper and said, if he ever passed by that way again, to come by and stop by and say hi. About a month later, um, the pastor was uh, going to pass through that area because he was going somewhere, and he had f called the, the boy's house, and a an, uh, man answered, and he said, um, I know I'm a pastor, and I uh, bought nuts from your son uh, a couple months ago, and I'm just wondering how he's doing. And there was silence on the other end of the phone, and then the um, guy said that I'm the father of El El Eslin, but he was crying. And he said, why are you crying? And he said, Eslin was uh, just killed um, by hitting, getting hit by a car when he was uh, selling nuts, and I just buried him. 
and the pastor was just um, um, very touched and very upset about this. And he said, oh, your son was such a good boy, and he's in heaven now. He's gone back to be with God. And he was about to hang up the phone. But the father said, uh, wait a minute, just a minute. Um, can you come, can come to our house? So the pastor said, oh, yes, sure, I'd be happy to come over. So he went over to um, Eslin's house, and he had some tea with him. And on that day, um, the, his father uh, showed uh, the pastor the present that the pastor had given his son um, that a uh, month ago. And he had said how his son was so excited to believe in Jesus Christ. And so the father wanted to know just who this Jesus Christ was that his son was so excited about. So the pastor explained uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ to them. And when he finished explaining, his uh, Eslin's entire family uh, confessed faith in Jesus Christ. A few weeks later, the whole family was baptized, and they started to go to their local church. This is the testimony. In this country of Azerbaijan, there's uh, only a population of about 140,000 people, and it's said that 95% of them are Islamic. But even in this country, you can see how the gospel of Jesus Christ has changed one little boy, which has changed to a family, which is uh, affecting the entire um, community. So you, it's just like a yeast, how it has an amazing effect and how it can change just anything when it gets in contact with. It has to. It has to change because that's what it does. It's an amazing, uh, powerful thing that yeast is, in the same way gospel is. So, and Jesus proclaims that the God, a kingdom of God will start out small but expand. And it starts out small in the individual and the families and the communities, but it eventually impacts everyone and everything. So, God's kingdom is something that cannot be stopped. It's not something that can be stopped at all because it is uh, very strong. And in this 2,000 years, it has uh, done a, made amazing progress and will continue to do so. So we are a part of uh, playing the role in this expansion. In this coming week, let us continue to work with, uh, walk with God and to expand His kingdom. Now let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for coming into my life, and thank you for changing my life. Thank you for the peace that you give me and the hope that you give me. Thank you because this is something that no one can take away from me. Lord, we know that this is you have made this in, in change inside us and that your kingdom is, is truly growing and expanding. Lord, through us, allow it to expand even more. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we'll have a time of prayer and silence. And I'll pray once more. May the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Now we'll have announcements. And we'd also like to vis welcome visitors today.